Today we're going to be answering all of your questions from the last week about running a BrickLink store over here in New Zealand and how we go about selling Lego. We are Kiwi Brick Exchange, a BrickLink seller located in Wellington, New Zealand. We resell on BrickLink and BrickHow and these videos will provide you a behind the scenes look into our systems and processes. Our first question is from Tom and Games 370. No offence at all, but is having a BrickLink store in New Zealand a really smart idea? Isn't there a lot of shipping costs being on the end of the earth? Well, so I can't imagine there being a lot of affoles in New Zealand or Australia. Well, Tom, there are more than a couple of people here in New Zealand. And no offence taken, I understand the question. We do have a smaller market here in New Zealand, uh, but there is a really large community of affoles. And what I would argue is that we actually have a really, really awesome opportunity over here to sell to a really very active and uh, busy market. And one thing we've found is as we've continued this journey so far, that there are a lot of people that are willing to buy from us. Uh, in terms of shipping costs, we do only sell locally really at the moment. We have a couple of orders that go to Australia, probably one or two a month at this stage. And so there are issues with shipping costs internationally, but we find that we're busy enough with what we've got here in New Zealand already. And uh, there are around about 120 stores, probably about 50 or 60 of those are very active. And so I find the market's not particularly saturated. And because we have a lot of Lego fans over here, it doesn't make it seem like orders slow down from time to time. Although last week was probably a bit of an anomaly. Bricked Out New Zealand, a long time subscriber of the channel says, What is your least favourite colour to part out? I always find I leave the black, greys and white till last. Kind of avoid them to the end. Uh, I completely understand where you're coming from. I think what we do is try and pick sets as much as possible that are not just fully dark bluish grey. However, the issue with running a BrickLink store is those are the parts that sell well. So our recent part out of the Sith Infiltrator was very, very complex. Just because there's so many similar parts, um, I find those sort of wedges that which go one way or the other way, that's probably the most difficult. Our colour's not too much of an issue, but yeah, I can see where you're coming from, the black, greys and whites till last. That's generally what we do as well, um, because those are the ones that make up the majority of the set. Uh, in terms of the least favourite colours, I think in particular it's some of those silvers, is something flat silver, metallic silver, particularly to start with we got a bit caught up with, uh, shall we say, some issues and errors when we went about parting those out. So I'd say those are the main ones, um, and if we're doing used as well, it's basically whites, your tans, um, generally have sun damage from some you know, use bulk lot, so that's probably the hardest one to part out for them. Whereas the greys are a lot easier, generally don't have too much sun damage. Uh, Tracy Snaps asks an awesome question, and she says, uh, how many hours on average do you spend running your store each week? That's the first part we'll answer the question. There's a little bit more to come. But I think when you're looking at running a BrickLink store, it's not just thinking about how many hours to what money you're getting in. And I think that's one thing that people need to get their heads around, is that BrickLink and running a BrickLink store is more of an investment to start with. There are some massive BrickLink stores that have a regular salary or a wage from the orders because they're regular you know, people coming in and buying, but that's not what you need to think about when you're starting, particularly not for our size and particularly because we're running this part-time. And so we're not trying to equate necessarily the hours to how much is coming in. However, in saying that, if we were to calculate sort of an hourly wage, uh, it wouldn't be too hard for us to do that. I'd say probably on average I spend about between 25 and 30 hours running the store. That's things from uh, updating spreadsheets, from packing orders, from you know posting things on social media, from sorting, uh, parting out, just sort of general tidying. I'd say that's sort of a rough estimate. You know, you're looking at probably three to four hours uh, a day during the week and then maybe a little bit longer on the weekend. Now in saying that, that's not fully focused sitting down doing work. You know, you could be doing three hours of watching a movie while you're sorting through some used Lego. And so again, if you're trying to equate that to an hourly wage or a rough cost, it's not actually going to be the best way of thinking about a BrickLink store. I would say actually sitting down, having the time to go through, look at uh, a movie while I'm sorting Lego is pretty fun. So I wouldn't really class that as work. However, running a BrickLink store does take time. Packing orders does take time. And so it sort of depends each week. And so I, that's sort of our aim. Uh, I wouldn't want to do more than sort of 25, 30 each week uh, because I do have a full-time job. The final part of the question says, is it reasonable considering the time spent tracking down deals on used parts, parting out, etc.? I always wonder if small owner-operated stores like these are able to provide a livable income, especially considering the generally high supply costs in New Zealand. And I think like any business, you know, you are dependent on what the cost is of what's going in and what's going out. And 
in terms of us at the moment, it is not a livable income. It is definitely what I would call a side hustle, um, but it's a really fun one, is that? And I wouldn't get into Bricklink if you, number one, don't like Lego, and number two, don't like setting your own time and schedules and, and innovating and trying different things. So I'd say, yes, it is time-consuming. Um, I don't know if what reasonable amount of time you'd be spending on finding deals and used parts, we generally like to sort of just, you know, scroll through at the end of the day and, and have a look. And there's certain times that I have on the weekends where um, I know that there's going to be deals or things going up on some of our platforms. And so we target those times as well for looking for some of our deals. And those are generally the times we've found the best deals. Uh, but again, sometimes a store will run a promotion over a weekend and it's, that looks really good. So we're going to use that. I do not spend much of my time going into retail stores. I don't think that's a good use of your time. Um, but we do have shortcuts and ways which we can show you in future videos of how we go about finding the value of a, of a, of a set and whether it's worth parting out or not. Uh, Crafter NZ 78 says, do you remove the stickers from used Lego or leave them on? Might be a bit controversial on this one, but if there's a sticker that's not placed correctly, maybe that's a bit of my OCD. We put that in our discard bin. Because a lot of the time what we're finding is when we're trying to get a sticker off, it's peeling off and there's so much sticker residue. And when we're doing and sorting use, it's just not worth our time to be peeling off that sticker. Unless it's a really expensive part. But generally it's not. So I'd say uh, the answer is leave them on. If it's placed nicely, it could be something we put into our store. We had some really awesome Chinese New Year sets uh, that went into the store and a lot of those have sold with the stickers on. But other stickers, just sort of general stickers with tiles and things, they're not really adding too much value to it. So uh, if we see a sticker that's not placed correctly, like I said, it goes in the discard pile. Uh, Danielle Wheels asks a really good question. She says, I have a new Bricklink store, but I haven't seen very many orders. And I think this is one of the questions that people will definitely be asking when they're starting out. I don't want to give up, but I'm struggling with getting parts in. I have 28,000 parts with how saturated the US Lego market is is it worth or is, is it worth even trying to continue? And while I'm not going to try and sit here and sound like an expert on the US market, uh, I would say there are obviously a lot of stores in the US. But in saying that, there are probably a lot more uh, people who are wanting to buy Lego. And so what we did in a previous video was talking about how to open a Bricklink store in 2024. And I'll just leave it in the description up here and, and put a link for you. But if this is a question that you're having when you're starting out, my suggestion would be looking at how you can set yourself apart from every other store. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, a really good uh, suggestion from somebody was just continually upload parts. But if you're struggling to find that upload parts, you know, uploading parts can be a bit tricky or you're not finding the time for it, then maybe you need to think about how you're diversifying. And one thing we did is we were never going to be able to compete with getting the most parts into the store. And so what we've done is we've tried to, number one, look at our pricing making sure we're competitive with people, not just looking at the six-month average, but also what's selling in our local area. We've looked at connecting with adult fans of Lego in New Zealand because if they know us, we're providing a service. You know, Bricklink is a service. It's a customer service. We're basically saving this person time from sorting Lego or finding it here. If our service is good, then people are going to want to buy from us again, and that's definitely what we've found. And the final thing is what we're doing right now, social media. You know, sharing our processes, showing what it looks like, there has been a number of people who have come onto the vlogs, had a look at what we're doing, and then they bought from us. So I would encourage you to keep going. Don't let that start, you know, discourage you. Um, at 28,000 parts, we were probably hitting maybe two to three orders a week if we were lucky. Now we're at 55-ish thousand. We're probably hitting about five or six, sometimes seven or eight. Sometimes we have very busy weekends. So I think I'd just encourage you to keep going, keep uploading parts. Uh, if it's trying to be an income, then obviously that's going to be a, a, you know, whether you think about doing that or not. But and I think at this stage, when you've only got 28,000 parts, particularly with some of those massive US stores, you are competing on bulk. And the reality is when people try and buy from a store, they're wanting to hit their wanted list, a lot of parts. And so at 28,000 parts, you don't really have that much. So I'd encourage you go with some new, uh, with the used first, or if you're struggling to get parts in, buy a couple of big bulky sets that aren't too expensive and try and add that to lift your part count up. And finally, Yellow Brick Road, fantastic uh, source of Lego content. If you're not already following Yellow Brick Road, make sure you do uh, type into YouTube and uh, watch his vlogs. But his question is, what are your ambitions for the store for the rest of the year? 
And that's a really good question. And I've mentioned in previous videos that my goals are quite simple. And so my ambition for the store is really just to keep growing. Um, we had a goal initially to set, or we set a goal initially to have 50,000 parts in the store by the end of the year. And we're already in August and we've already clocked over that several times, then gone back down with orders and things. But uh, I think it's just about making sure we're consistent. So the big thing for me at the end of the year is staying consistent. So uh, we're looking at doing $50 of value every day, whether it's a couple of minifigures, whether it's a good amount of parts. And if we don't hit a day, then we just try and catch up with that. And not trying to be too stringent on it, you know, not getting downbeat because we haven't done that. But as much as possible, we're trying to continue uploading parts. So that's the main one. Uh, the second one is we want to grow our social media content here. And so uh, with you guys watching this week, it's really awesome. And uh, it really does help us if you like and comment on the video. So please do that now. And if you're not already subscribed, then make sure you do subscribe because we've got a lot of content that we're thinking and planning of doing. And uh, the more times you hit that like button, just the more times it pops into my head. So uh, hit the like button, comment below, and uh, that really helps us grow here. And that's one thing we're really hope, hoping to, uh, to build on this year. Uh, in terms of the actual store, we are limited for space, so I am looking at how we sort of use the space uh, really well, and at the moment you've got these organizers behind me, and uh, we've kind of got the space just in front where the camera's sitting, where it's got a lot of our used Lego at the moment. And so I'm kind of considering whether I'm trying to part it out to parts, because it does take time, or whether I start getting rid of some of this bulk lot and add a little bit more new. So I think one of the ambitions for the store is to start to transition a little bit more to new Lego, Obviously it takes a lot less time, still has a similar value, um, but adding things to the store. So I think that's probably our main goal for the rest of the year. And a big thank you to the people who have asked questions this week. Uh, really cool to sit down, take the time, talking one-to-one -to, -one to the camera, and uh, answering as many questions as possible. And if you do have any further questions, please feel free to comment below, and we'll hopefully answer them in the comments. But if you haven't already, make sure you watch this video, which will answer a lot of your questions when sorting used LEGO.